former President Donald Trump all but admitting he tried to overturn the 2020 election, which he so decisively lost. Here is a statement that he just put out. If the vice president, Mike Pence, had absolutely no right to change the presidential election results in the Senate, despite fraud and many other irregularities, how come the Democrats and rhino Republicans like wacky Susan Collins are desperately trying to pass legislation that will not allow the vice president to change the results of the election? Actually, what they are saying is that Mike Pence did have the right to change the election, and now they want to take that right away. And this is key. He added here in the statement, unfortunately, he didn't exercise that power. He could have overturned the election. Just take that in for a minute. He could have overturned the election. This comes hours after he told a crowd in Texas that he would pardon the January 6 rioters if he were back in the White House. If I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. Joining me now is Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren of California. She sits on the Congressional Select Committee that is investigating the violent and deadly assault on the U.S. Capitol last January. All right, Congresswoman, let's start with this new statement from the president. Is this key evidence that the committee will be looking into? Well, let me just say this. Um, you know, both uh, minority uh, Republican leader McConnell and McCarthy said uh, at right at the uh, January 6th event that the mob was spun up by the former president and directed at the Capitol. They violently attacked um, hundreds of officers. We People died. The officer lost an eye. Officer lost fingers. Uh, there was traumatic brain damage to some officers. I mean, this was a crime. And to suggest that the people who did that uh, should be pardoned is really contrary to our system of law and order. I think uh, we should all embrace our system of justice and law and order, unlike the things said by the former president in his speech. I think, um, you know, we're taking a look at the Electoral Count Act because uh, there it's an old statute, and there were some of our colleagues in the House that tried to exploit ambiguities in it. But I frankly think the role of the vice president will probably remain un, unchanged. I guess the former president is saying that the vice president gets to choose the next president, in which case Kamala Harris will be presiding at the, uh, at the counting of the votes. And I guess he's saying she gets to choose who the next president is. That's clearly not the, what the Constitution uh, provides for. He, he must be kidding. I mean, it, it, it's just, it doesn't provide for anything um, that he said. He, he basically is saying in this statement, just point blank, which he has said, he has said it, you know, the election was stolen, even though it's not. He's, he's kind of continued to, to use that rhetoric, but now he's just putting out in this statement point blank that the former vice president could have abused his power to overturn the will of the people in this country. It's really just stunning um, for anyone who cares about this country. I, I wanna ask you about his comments on um, wanting to pardon those involved in the January 6th riot if he becomes president again. Do you think that is just bluster or something more incriminating, like tampering with a witness? I, I have no idea what is in the president's mind, but I will say this. The other comments he made in that speech, basically calling out uh, for demonstrations if uh, you know anything adverse legally happens to him is pretty extraordinary. And I think it's important to think through what message is being sent? Clearly, there are a lot of Americans uh, who like the former president, who voted for him, and uh, who, who cheer him on. 
That's their right. I, I don't worry about that group of people. I do worry about the militias, some of these extremist groups. Remember in his debate when he said, um, uh, stand down and stand by Proud Boys, they had a key role in organizing uh, that riot. And I think when they hear that from the former president, uh, they hear a call to arms. So I, I do think that we are in very dangerous uh, territory with this rhetoric. And uh, those of us who are against chaos, those of us who believe in law and order, uh, need to speak up strongly against this trend that the former president is encouraging. Right. And it's anyone can peacefully assemble in this country. It's in the Constitution. But given the context sure. here, him calling for protests, if he is, um, you know, uh, if charged, that is just you're right. It, it does certainly raise a lot of questions. Will the committee call former President Trump for an interview? We haven't decided that yet. Um, we are. Uh, well, we have a lot of uh investigations underway, and that is a weighty decision that we have discussed but have not decided on. Um, so I don't know what the committee will do, and we will certainly be sure to let you know as soon as that decision is made. Can you just bring us in a little bit more on sort of what you're weighing in that regard? Because, I mean, he just released a statement all but admitting that he wanted to, to launch a coup. Um, there is so much evidence out there. What is the conversation like behind the scenes weighted for and against asking him for an interview? Well, let me, I never discussed the private discussions the, the committee has. Let me just tell you some factors that I'm weighing. First, the, the former president has a veracity problem. Um, that is well known. We, uh, you know, there used to be how many falsehoods does he say in any one sentence? So I think there has to be a weighing of how valuable the ev evidence or testimony would actually be. Secondarily, he is very litigious and he would uh, tie the committee up in court for as long as he possibly could. And since uh, there are various privileges, that a former president can assert, even if they're, if they don't hold up in the end, uh, that can take a very long time. So that has to be uh, factored in. Uh, finally, um, we have a lot of information from those around him uh, in the Trump inner circle. We have documents that may actually create the picture. One possibility would be simply to invite him uh, to meet with us. Uh, that would avoid a lengthy uh, court fight. But we, ha as I say, have not made that decision yet. And I, I will say that the huge amount of documents that we are receiving from others in his inner circle, um, from the National Archives, is starting to paint uh, a rather vivid picture, as far as I'm concerned, about what happened. And when that picture is put together, we will reveal it to the American public in uh, a series of hearings. You made clear to say that the National Archives documents, in addition to documents that have been turned over from those in his inner circle, have you um, actually formally interviewed anyone in the vice president's inner circle, including Mark Short and anyone else? Greg Jacobs um, is another one who is also um, would be someone the committee would want to talk to. Have you spoken with them? Well, let me just say that we uh, don't uh, announce these hearings because some of the witnesses then become subject to um, threats of violence from the former president's um, supporters. I will say this, that we have um, uh, meaty interviews with people in a position to know in the vice president's circle as well as the former president's circle. And uh, as, as for the questioning, the process is this. We have uh, the committee attorneys um, do the main part of the questioning. The members of the committee uh, are also present virtually, and we're able to ask further questions, uh, which I sometimes do, as do other members. But frankly, the, uh, the, 
the, the attorneys, many of them former U.S. attorneys, are quite good at their questions. Okay, and we knew some, like Mark Short, had been cooperating with the committee. My understanding was he was supposed to meet with the committee last week. Um, I want to ask you about the vice president. Is the committee going to ask the, the former vice president, Mike Pence, uh, to talk with the committee? Again, we have not made a final decision on that, but we uh, hope to get all of the information in a way that's respectful, um, but that gets us uh, the information that we need. If we have to call in the president and vice president to get all of the truth, I, I will weigh very heavily on us to do that. Um, but it's not clear that that will be necessary given the volumes of other information that paint a pretty clear picture 